we want to bring you more perspective on what happened yesterday. Let's bring in ABC News contributor Richard Frankel, who's a former FBI special agent in charge. Richard, thank you so much for joining us. I want to get right into this. The, the question on everyone's mind this morning is how did a shooter get within 400 feet from the rooftop to carry out this attack? And would you say this was a security failure just entirely on the Secret Service? Yeah. Uh, the fact that that individual, uh, the attempted uh, uh, assassinator, uh, was able to get that close, it, it really is a failure of security. Um, you know, I, I can't blame Secret Service yet. Uh, I can't blame any other law enforcement yet. There's going to be an investigation into what happened. They're going to be looking at how did he get that close, who was in charge. You know, normally Secret Service has the scene. They control everything. But they do work with other agencies. So therefore, was there a hole in that protective cover that should have been around the president? Uh, you know, it, it's 400 uh, um, uh, feet away. Um, that's not far away. The fact that he was able to get on a roof that should have been either secured and or patrolled um, is a failure of law enforcement to protect the former president. And it sounds like there's going to be a huge fallout following this, um, what do you think is going to happen next? Do you think that someone at the top um, could lose their jobs as a result uh, of what happened, the inaction in the, in the beginning of this? Yeah, I don't know if somebody's going to lose their job. You know, if you go back to when, uh, it, during the Trump administration, when somebody was able to jump over the fence uh, at the White House, that definitely caused a shakeup within the Secret Service. I know people will move. Uh, I, I believe some people retired. Um, I think you're going to see that type of uh, that type of uh, response yeah. to what happened here. You know, you've got the team that protects the president. Um, you've also got the team that does the recheck of everything to see where people should be to make sure that the president is covered at all of these events. And then you've got that team that is on site and protecting, you know, the outer perimeter of where the president is. Um, it, it, it looks like the inner perimeter, you know, his his team was there as soon as he was shot. They uh, encircled him. They uh, they used, you know, basically a human shield to make sure that he wouldn't be hurt further. But the fact that a shot was taken by somebody uh, attempting to assassinate a president, that is a failure on law enforcement. It is a failure to protect the president. And it's definitely something that is going to be looked at from all angles. Um, uh, of how we go forward in the future protecting our presidents. Yeah, there were still, uh, according to Josh Heinegger's reporting, eight shots that were fired from that uh, oh. gunman towards him. And that shooter uh, was identified as Matthew Crooks of Bethel, Pennsylvania. Uh, authorities saying this is a lone wolf. They, they put out that information pretty quickly. Why do you think it's important that, that they made sure to put it out that, hey, we have this person here? Well, you want to put it out right away, and you want to do the best you can to... to, to alleviate fear that there is a cell or that this is a grand conspiracy. Now, I, I will say they put out right away, uh, to the best of their knowledge, that this is a lone shooter. They are not stopping at that. You know, they are going to look at every possible and potential scenario where this person was associated with somebody else, that this may be a conspiracy. Not to say it is a conspiracy, mm -hmm. but, you know, when we get these cases, uh, just because somebody says it's a lone wolf doesn't mean that's the only angle you're going to do. You've now got teams of investigators that are going to go out and look at every scenario, at every lead, and make sure that this person is not connected to anything more nefarious. Sure. Yeah, so certainly every stone unturned. Um, let's talk about here at home. And, and we've seen it. We have our reporters out there showing the high security. You're seeing it in the city, Trump Towers at Bedminster, obviously, where um, the former president is. Um, are we going to see that kind of security in the coming days, the RNC, perhaps? Yeah, I, I think from this point forward, at least through the election, you're going to see an increased police and law enforcement presence, where, one, wherever the uh, uh, former president goes, uh, and, and two, at all events going forward, including for President Biden. Uh, because if they were able to do this against the former president, if somebody was able to do this against the former president, the potential is there to do it against the president. And so I think you're going to see Secret Service completely ramped up. 
Secret Service is part of the Department of Homeland Security. You're going to see additional resources from Department of Homeland Security at every one of these events where, you know, the, the, the presidents are and at the RNC going forward. It is just going to be a, a sea of law enforcement. Hmm. And, uh, you know, they're going to make sure that um, nothing like this happens on their watch. Yeah, any retaliatory attacks they're, they're going to possibly be watching for. Thank you so much for joining us. ABC News contributor Richard Franco, we really appreciate your time this morning.